education. You know, Anthony's group, that's what they specialize in, you know, is getting that word out. What's a wood turtle? What's a bog turtle? What's a box turtle? And nowadays, with the general loss of interest of kids even going outside, they don't know the difference. They see something cute on the ground, I'm gonna take it home and put it in my fish tank. You know, wood turtles are a warranted species on that list because of uh, their overall behavior. They've got personalities. They're beautiful. And um, they're also, the rarer they get, as with most pet trade species, uh, the, the more they are uh, looked at as a species to attain, which means the price goes up. Each turtle I have is equipped with a, um, a transmitter, which emit, emits a, a signal. Um, each transmitter, transmitter has a different signal. So what I've done is that certain frequency I've programmed into my device. And that turtle's quote unquote name is 88. So when I go to turtle 88, that frequency, frequency emits. So I'm able to track it. This one's still up in the, uh, the upland area. What's most important to them is they're habitat specialists, meaning they need a wide variety of habitats. And during the spring and summer, they will uh, go through a process called estivation, which is technically almost um, a, sub a summer hibernation. And they need open meadows, um, old fields, shrub habitat, pretty much areas that consist of a lower canopy, a shrub canopy, grass canopy. And unfortunately, another reason for their decline too is that they um, old cornfields, agricultural areas. So a lot of times they are um, they're crushed by tractors. It's the whole citizen science approach. You know, we have a natural passion. We have this natural passion to jump in that water, get our feet wet. I've seen Anthony go head first after a turtle. And most people would be like, okay. But the hard work, when you go out, you actually physically see this turtle nesting. You sit there, you wait, you wait, you wait, and guess what? She gets up and walks away. The most frustrating thing ever. But once she actually digs that chamber and lays those eggs, on average, you usually hatch about 80, 80 days later. When you see these little guys come up, and as Anthony knows, I mean, there's no better feeling. There's no better feeling. So if we could have more volunteers and more people that are actually interested in going outside, oh, it would make a, a heck of a difference, a heck of a difference. Yeah, even with this. Let's see if we can go around. I definitely see Anthony. He looks like a redwood. The recording device came out twice, so that's how it's Can you show us the uh, radio on the back of the phone? I sure can. There you go. Wow, that looks like a giant, uh, it's like a phone online or something. Yeah, and honestly, it goes by the body mass of the turtle. Um, the heavier the turtle, the larger you can put on. This one uh, approximately lasts four to five years. And at first, I thought she'd be uh, a little too small for it due to her size, but she's got great mass on her. I think she was uh, nine, 900 grams or so, I forget. But yeah, this is uh, an adult female. Females have flat plastrons. And as you can tell too, there's no annua. She's an old lady, yep. She's even got a little lip mark tattoo. <laughs> but um, yeah, as you can tell here, there's no annua in the turtle. I mean, there's no way to really realistically get an idea of how old she is. Um, as they're younger, as I'll show you on another turtle, um, as we go on, you'll, you're able to see the annual life, which are pretty much growth rings, same thing as a tree. Answer your question. This stream in particular is uh, 
what's known as a Keystone Street. And it's pretty much what other state and federal agencies use as an example of pristine health. Um, one of the main reasons it's so healthy is because of the area adjacent to it. Everybody thinks about protecting the stream and the water, but what you have to do is protect the watershed. It's what's around it which makes it so healthy. And another important fact of the stream, it's actually the only one that flows from Connecticut into New York, meaning it's the only tributary headwater stream that feeds into the New York City drinking water supply. So she was living under the bridge and she's still staying in the same area? Yeah, um, as far as home range goes, some of them, as I had mentioned, have a huge range. You know, huge. I found there's one male that we have here that goes way up on top of the hill here, hundreds of yards away. Probably a quarter of a mile away, to be honest with you. While other ones, such as this female, I've been watching her now for only about a year or so. Can move around a bit, show me different sides. But um, she hasn't wandered much. Um, she's only been in. I don't know, I would say this square, 25, 30 yards, you know. And this one, in comparison to the older one, you can kind of make out her annuli. However, she's still, you know, a full grown adult. There's no way you can really get a, an idea. Now why is your tail a little nip there? A predator. A predator did that, so yep. another turtle didn't do that to her. Nope. Um, wood turtles in general, I've seen them sustain grievous, I mean, injuries. Um, I had found one several years ago that was literally missing the entire rear panel of her shell, both carapace and plastron. And um, I thought she was dead at first, but thanks to radio telemetry, I put an antenna on her. I followed her out through the summer, kept on checking on her, and every time I'd look, it was, you know, it'd be full of ants, it'd be full of maggots. It was, it was bad, but nature be nature, you know, and this is what gives science something to, uh, to look at. She went into hibernation that year. And the next spring, I come out to take a look at her to see how she's doing. She wouldn't come out. She wouldn't come out. So finally, I went down, I found her, and I pulled her out. And lo and behold, I turned her over, and the wound had completely healed over. And it's nature's own miracle of surgery. You know, the, the bugs, it ate, it ate the back, that bad bacteria. You know, the parasites got in there and cleaned the wound out completely. And she was good to go. You think that the winter actually killed all the bugs if she had a clean bill of health when she came out in the spring? I can't really say yes or no because, you know, bugs, insects in general go pretty dormant during the winter. So I can't really say if they really made an impact on the, the actual healing. But as I said, she was good to go and she actually laid a, laid a nest that year with only one rear leg. It took her a little while, but she did it and we got a few offspring from it too, which is great. Is she still out here? Fortunately, no. What happened? Two years ago, I went out one spring looking for her and I found her washed up upside down. Body was gone, nothing, just an empty shell. And I'm trying to do a little detective work, trying to figure out what happened. And obviously it could have been a multiple factors. Could have been uh, uh, raccoons, predation, um, otters, or a major predator of wood turtles. I read a book um, and uh, a guy like me, citizen science, was out studying the turtles and walk, goes out one spring to check on them. And I think, what, 75 to 80% of the turtles are dead due to otters. Otters will go down the hibernaculas and pull them out and eat their limbs, their tails, and then just leave them there. Her, however, I looked around more and it looked like she had perished from being washed up on the shore from a beaver dam that had given way. And so I'm assuming she was washed up, maybe she couldn't get in or the water had gone already, but the dam had breached and she was washed up on shore. But yeah, she's a beautiful female. See the orange in there, but yeah, and their and their eyes too. I mean, if you look close, it's it's almost like a galaxy, and that's that's. I don't know. And they're they're beautiful creatures. Sure, put it right back. Right down there. 